Hi and welcome to freecgtutorials.com Let's take a look at the thing we are going to work on. Here is one of the images. As you can see, the living area. The other image is a relatively simple kitchen. And, and the third is a dining area. Now open up Max and load the project files. You have the project files here in this folder, but the furnaces are not included due to copyright. Now open up Max and load them. As you can see, this thing is relatively simple. You can orbit around using Alt Middle Mouse button and uh, also press F3 to go to wireframe. You can see that uh, I hadn't modeled this area outside of the room, just the area which is needed. Now press C and select camera 4. Okay. Now before we get started, let me point out something. I'm assuming that you already know the basics of V-Ray lights and rendering tabs and also how to navigate in Max using this mouse sorry this buttons and this is a lighting lesson we're not going to cover any of the materials or any modeling in this lecture press C to open up camera And now press F10, bring up this dialog box. And from the output size, make sure that your image aspect ratio is 1.33. You can like it also. Under camera, show save frame and configure viewports. And we want to turn on action safe. Press OK. Now we can make sure that uh, the most important parts are inside this area, but the yellow box region will be rendered. Okay, now press F10 to bring up the render setup window. From here you can see that by default a scanline should be the renderer, but change it to uh, V-Ray Advanced. Uh, also, uh, if you're using an older version of V-Ray 1.5 or even lower, you can see follow along. We're not using the new features. You can also uh, select V-Ray RT as active shade, although we are not using it. Just a habit. Now let me see. In the image sampler rollout, change the type to fixed and also turn off entire aliasing filter and uh, the other settings are default no GI nothing press F9 as you can see and there's a slight problem with the window glasses and that is due to converting the max file to 3ds not drag and drop the glass material to the problematic areas to fix them. Also right click in the scene and select V-Ray Scene Converter and convert all the materials to V-Ray. So the scene's materials are absolutely V-Rays. Okay, now render again. As you can see, the problem is fixed. So from now on, I'm gonna render out inside V-Ray Frame Buffer so you can see the timings enable it and also get resolution from max show the last and render again to see the result okay here it comes now click this icon we want to stamp some of the attributes here go under settings and select let me see here 
uh, frame stamp. Click on that. Okay. Now, as you can see here, we should apply a, slam, a stamp and click on the variables. We want to render, show the render time. And also, you can select primitives, anything you like. But in this case, I just want to see the render time. Uh, that's okay. Now, to see the result, you should type in the exact same thing you, sh you see here, down here. Type in exactly as shown in here. Okay, 0.8 seconds. Also, you can uh, save the images in V-Ray frame buffer for comparison six later on. Click on that and save this image. Okay. Now, let me see. Turn on indirect illumination. And also, uh, render for now. Render for now. Here we have a complete black image, as you can see. And the reason why, you can see here in the global switches, the default lights are off when GI is on. Okay? You can turn it off and also turn off the hidden lights to make sure that the scene is being lit just by lights which you can see. Now, uh, for the secondary, change it to light cache and the primary to light cache to just focus on one at a time. Now we should add a sunlight to the scene for the primary illumination source. Uh, it's better to place it on top view. Press T and Alt W to maximize viewport. You can use standard lights target direct, but in this case, I'm using V-Ray Sun. Okay, click and drag it to add. And also, uh, you can add a V-Ray Sky Environment Map, although we're going to override it later on. Reposition the sun in front view, so it's somehow a midday sun. That's okay for now. Uh, although that default intensity is far high, but let's render to see what we get. Okay, here it comes the render, about 12 seconds. Save the image for comparison. And here you can make sure that you have enough disk space for the images cache. Okay. Now you can see we have some washed out areas. On the other hand, the image is too dark, as you can see. Okay. Uh, one of the reasons is that the, the sun intensity is too high. Turn it down to something more manageable like 0.5. And render again to see what we get. Okay, it comes a render. Again, too dark. Although I think the washed out areas is now less. Now, uh, to compare to previous image, set one as A and set the other as B. You can see uh, the sun intensity wasn't the main problem to affect the room's lighting. Okay? But the overall brightness is now lower. Okay. Now we place, before we place any field lights out of the windows, I think it's better to override all of the materials to be raised. 
So press F10 and under global switches, turn on override material. Now press M to bring up the material editor and drag and drop every material in the none tab. Here, as you can see this, not the black one, the gray, the gray one, and instance it. Also, uh, like the highlight glassiness to reflection glassiness. Okay, to make sure that they are the same, if they are not already. And render the scene again. This is the result. Save this image and you can set one as A, the other as B to compare the images. Now you can see the problem. The windows are blocking the light coming in through. So uh, we should exclude them from the override. Now, uh, I think you can select them all and make a selection set. You can press J to hide and sh uh, show the object's mounting box. You can see as in here. Okay, select all of the glasses one by one. Okay, and this too. Now here, uh, we want to name them whatever you want, but I will name them glasses. And now, under override exclude, select the glasses selection says and override them from both illumination and shadow casting. Click on OK. Now, render again to see the result. Sorry, from the camera view. Press the select camera for and render again. As you can see, the glass material is completely black and that's caused by converting materials to V-ray. And here on the refract, you can make it more transparent, not all the way down, but something around 250, I think. That's okay. Now, you can see here, the result is much better. Now, save it and compare to previous. Set one as A and the other as B. Here you can see. Some skylight light coming here through the windows. And the scene has a sort of blue tint. Overall, the scene is much, much better and brighter. Press A to open up environment and effects. You can see in the environment, we have the default V-Ray sky. Okay. But in the environment, we want to override that. For now, no image, but turn the multiplier to 10 and render the scene again. Here it comes the render. Okay, compared to previous. Now we have managed to remove the blue tint of the sky, although the room is darker a bit compared to previous. But the lighting is more even now compared to previous. Now, uh, let me see the next thing. We may want to use color mapping to do some of these burned out areas to bring some illumination in these dark areas. Also, here. Now, go under color mapping, roll out, select Reinhardt. And so it's something in between exponential and linear multiply 0.5. That's okay, render the scene again. Now you can see compared to previous 
Oh, I think I, I hadn't saved the previous image, but I think now it's better. You can raise it, the burn value to 0.75, render again to see the result. Uh, the, room is, the room is now much brighter, but so, uh, raise up the gamma to 2.2, depends on your monitor, but 2.2, something between 1.8 and 2.2 is good. Render the scene. Okay, now we can see a much more better illumination. Compare it to previous. Okay, here you can see. We have a much more better illumination. We have some burnout areas still, but now we have a more uniform lighting. Now, uh, we can place some fill lights to fill this area between ceiling and this area. Okay, now let me see. Actually, I'm going to override uh, this non tab with an HDR image. You can use whatever you want, but I'm going to use this map. And let me show you what is the image. View image, okay. Here is the HDR I'm going to use. You can use whatever you want. But actually there are many of them for free that you can download from internet. Now render this in again. Okay, here it comes the render. You can see the image is a lot darker due to HDR intensity, but uh, there's no need to increase the intensity of HDR. We want to add some field lights compared to previous. Now you can see. We have a much colorful image now. Okay. Now uh, I wanna add some very planes here inside the room. Go to perspective. You can also add them outside of the room, but it's better to place them inside. Select the plane, turn on auto grid to make sure you're drawing on the wall okay and draw roughly about the size in most cases there's no need to draw exactly the size of the window roughly the size is more than enough we can shrink it a little to make sure that the light is not penetrating otherwise it will result in hot spots. That's okay for now. I'll pause it and press the other lights. There are four lights in the living area, which are instance, but as you can see here, the one in the kitchen is just a copy. And uh, select the light. Set the multiplier to something like five, like five, and select one of the others and set that to five also. Select camera four and render the scene. Okay, <laughs> here it comes to render. As you can see, I didn't turn off visibility of lights. You can see the very light shapes here. Now the scene is much brighter now. The first thing we need is to uh, turn on the, in the invisible attribute. Also, uh, you can turn off ignore light normal so that emitting photons are perpendicular to their surface to avoid brightening the ceiling more. And turn off the effect specular and reflection. Turn. So invisible. 
and ignore light. Affect is making a fair reflection. Okay. Now you can uh, render the scene again to see what we have. Here it comes. You can see that the intensity of the sun is a little bit too high. You can turn it down just a bit. So select the sunlight, gray sun, and turn it down to half, maybe 0.25. And let me see. Here is the result. Mm, while the video was paused, I lowered the sunlight intensity and repositioned the sun so that we have a nice shadow of the windows frame caused by sun orientation compared to previous one now we have managed to uniform the overall lighting in the scene now uh, i also lowered down the light cache subdivisions to 500 so that renders go faster Okay, now I think the windows are a bit too bright. We can lower down their intensity a tiny amount. Now let's see, uh, select them, select one of the rear lights. And select very light one here under the multiplier set it to three and the color as you've noticed I've selected a pale sky blue color for the field lights to simulate the skylights. Okay. Now select very light five and also lower its intensity to three. Now, I think we can, uh, underneath global switches, turn off glassy effects and also displacement until the final render. Even though we're using an override, again, just a good habit to make our renders go faster in case the override material is not being used. Let me see. Under color mapping, uh, turn off affect background and turn on clamp out and some pixel mapping. Okay. Now let me see. Also, I think we can add some more orange color to the sunlight to make it more warmer. So select the sunlight, very sun one, and increase its turbidity to four. Uh, larger values make sunlight appears more yellowish, while smaller values make it more clear, more of a clear sky. Okay. An amount of four should be enough. Render the scene again. Here is the result. Save the image and compare to previous one. Now we have more contrast, but the splotches are coming back, and you can see, which are not we're concerned about at this stage. You can see here at the top, but that's okay. Uh, also, while the video was paused, I went ahead and uh, on the ceilings, received GI parameter, I lowered down to 0.8. Now you can see uh, the ceiling is not brightened that much. And it's a bit more natural. 
now that the overall lighting is good let's change the primary bounce to radiance map and leave the second as light sketch also in the radiance map presets like very low and the hemispheric subdivision to 20 and interpolation samples to 20 also let me see okay everything is good also you can turn the store direct light off if you want to avoid losing shadow details render the scene again here it comes the render now you can see the noise is less in these areas but we have some light leaks around windows which is not a big deal they will be removed easily by adjusting the hemispheric subdivision and also interpolation samples okay now now the overall lighting is good I can I think I, we can have a test render with higher subdivisions okay now in the preset select medium hemispheric subdivisions to 50 and interpolation samples to 30 35 it depends on you the light cache you can turn it up to 1000 and render the scene again to see the result okay it took about one minute you can see we have some alias in here we have lost the details but uh, that's due to anti-aliasing filter here uh, fixed for now but we'll change it to adaptive DMC later on now we want to fix the anti-aliasing problem so it's better to turn off indirect illumination to just focus on the image sampling now we can make sure that any aliasing or noise in the image is created by poor anti-aliasing not the GI render and see the result okay Let's see what we get with no changes but GI off you can see here we have much much noise in these areas especially in these darker areas let's change it to adaptive DMC and also I think by default you should have 1 and 4 for min and max subdivisions render it to see what we get okay uh, now the image is a little better but we have some bad aliasing much of noise here in these dark areas windows frames There's still lots of noise everywhere now let's increase the values to something around I think mm, 2 or 5 I think and lower the threshold color ratio to 0.005 or maybe 0.008 in this case should be fine render again here it comes the render the image is not better but still the details are lost and much of noise in the dark areas as you can see in the image some bad aliasing here around this edge it's still not a good image increase them to something about 4 and 8 and or 5 and 8 render again here it comes a render not too bad but still we want to go higher lower the color threshold to 
0.005 and the max subdivision to 9. That's okay. And let me see here. You can also lock the color threshold to DMC sample threshold, which makes no difference for our purpose. And turn the mean sample to 20 or 25, it depends on you. Let me see. The global subdivision multiplier is okay. Now, now I will unhide all the same objects, although you don't have the furnitures. But you can still follow along. Okay, now uh, make sure that the indirect illumination is on and render the scene. Here it comes the render. It took only three minutes and a half. It's a bit dark now, but we will put materials and texture in the scene. That will be fixed, I think. If not, we will fix it in the post. Also, you can add some ambient occlusion to make the image more realistic, but for architectural purposes, it's not needed. Okay, here is the third view of our render. It took about three minutes. Close it. And let's, let's go to camera one. Oh, sorry, camera three in this case, and render the same from this view also. Okay, here we have the renders. Also, it took about three minutes. Now we want to output the final image. Set the width to 2048 and the height will be calculated automatically. Okay, let me see. Enable built in frame buffer, turn on glass effects, and turn off overall materials. We don't have displacement in this case, you can turn it on, doesn't matter. Okay, and image sampler, the adaptive DMC. Uh, the min max of I think 5 and 8 should be fine in this case. And also in the environment, everything is okay. Color mapping, okay. In direct illumination. Here, uh, we wanna increase the interpolation sample to 35. Hemispheric subdivision is okay. Also, uh, under the mode, select the in multi frame incremental. Under the light cache rollout, 2000 for the subdivisions. Let me see. The minimum of samples of maybe 25 should be fine. And here under dynamic memory limit. If you have a good amount of RAM, just put zero here. But make sure you have V-Ray 2.0 or above. Now V-Ray will use as much as RAM. That's needed. Now here under batch render, select batch render, we're going to add the cameras. And select them, camera 4. You should save a preset here. Maybe production high in this case. I will save it. Yes. Save. Now here, under preset, we will load it. Production high. Also an output path. Okay, maybe this one. I'll go ahead and make them up. Okay, I'm back. Now make sure that you render from the batch render dialog window. 
now here we are in Photoshop you can see the living area here the kitchen okay and the dining area which is a bit dark compared to previous images but go under images and uh, to correct that you can select uh, here auto contrast it's much better now okay I save them out and open them up in After Effects here we are in After Effects CS4 double click on this blank area to open up the project go where you save the images select them all load them ok we don't need this view tree delete it now click and drag the view one to this comp area to make a new comp exact same size of the image now I'm going to add some glow to the image type in here glow and we'll use the after effects glow that's okay okay now here and glow will increase it so that the brightest area of the image will have the effects only something I don't know maybe around 8 around 80 glow colors to A and B so I think we can lower down the glow radius something around 4 and 5 should be fine and the glow intensity to about half maybe 0.5 let me see 0.5 let it refresh okay that's okay for now okay maybe 0.3 okay now it's much better now duplicate it by pressing ctrl D now on this layer this new layer we wanna add some glints in some of these shiny areas we wanna mask out this some of areas grab the pen tool and start clicking to somehow make a plastic shelf apart if you made a mistake you can click back a space or delete it around these areas should be fine okay and down here that's okay we'll add this middle part in another layer now I'm going to use a third party plugin called Sapphire Lighting Glint, although you don't have to. Let me see here Sapphire Lighting Glint. Click and drag. Okay. Make sure that you are applying the effect to the right layer. That's okay. The default settings are too much high for us now increase the glow threshold okay here increase the let me see lower down the brightness to around 0.5 should be fine or 0.7 now toggle switches or mode and change the layer blending mode to lighten select it now while this layer is selected 
increase the threshold to something around I don't know 0.9 or around that check the result okay now under brightness brightness details we want to adjust the brightness details in the axis especially axis separately okay now under the side step maybe lower it down something more no lower it down significantly something around 30 20 25 under the side details size details you can adjust the size of any given axis separately lower the size x lower down the size y but leave it these values until you're satisfied maybe 0.3 for size y and the size diagonal around these values should be fine i think you can also adjust the size of red green and blue that's good that's good okay play play with these values until you're satisfied it works fine for me now uh, another glints duplicate the layer and uh, turn off glow press M and delete these masks now grab your pen tool and uh, draw, draw a mask around the lights so, like this should be fine okay and press F to feather the mask a bit not too much to prevent leaving sharp edges okay that's good for now now and let me see as you can see the image is now a bit blurry we can fix it by reducing the threshold blur of the second layer now it's better much sharper okay you can lower the brightness tiny amount okay now select the third layer and add, ex add exposure control which is found under color correction exposure Add exposure of maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2 should be fine. And you can also add a sharpen filter. Let me see under blur and sharpen. Uh, here you can select the sharpen. No, the unsharp mask. Sharpen. So the amount to about let me see five should be fine a value between one and five okay here you can see the final image Okay, till the key again to minimize. Now go for the second comp. Click and drag view two to a new comp. No color correction is needed. Maybe some glow or glints around the lights. Now 
again let's add a glow type in glow here now in the glow threshold increase it and change glow colors to A and B decrease the glow radius let me see let it refresh okay maybe increase it a bit more that's okay I think let me see around this window okay that's okay now duplicate this layer again control D duplicate uh, <laughs> make sure you have the layer selected if not it will duplicate whatever you are selected Delete it take low they don't need it now add a sapphire uh, glint let me find it manually under the sapphire lighting uh, glint add it and grab your handy pen again draw a mask around the lights okay now further mask a bit press F just a bit I think that's okay now in down the brightness a bit until it seems fine okay now I think that's good for now now also duplicate it again delete the mask if we have and draw a mask around the two metal beams one here and another here around this beam okay further the mask a bit now let's increase the brightness and lower down the threshold make sure that the layer blending mode is set to lighten okay now lower down the brightness let me see maybe a bit lower okay and increase the threshold a bit further the mask not too much here okay I think that's okay let's let's adjust the green size for the previous layer on the size on the size it is adjust the size x and y individually maybe play with these values until it looks right okay now let me see here is the result okay I think uh, we have a hard edge around this beam we can maybe turn off the feathering for both two then click this icon 
uh, and make it, I think, the same size as the B. Okay. And this one also. Down here. Now. Now I think it's much better. Down here. Now we can render out these cobs. Go to render queue and under projects, drag down these two cobs here and and for render settings everything is okay. But for output modules, select the format target sequence 32 bits per pixel. Okay, I'll click this icon here to change the color resolution to 32 bits per pixel also. And also I specify a path for the render out images and render them. Here I loaded the render images from After Effects into Photoshop. Now you can see the final results. The other image. And here is the third image. Also, you can take a look at the images at full res and comps which are included in your project files. Okay, hopefully this was a helpful tutorial. I'm Ashkan Moezi from FreeCGTutorial.com. Thanks for watching.